So in this video, you'll learn how to give inferior alveolar nerve block. We'll start off with two anatomical landmarks. You have to rely on hard tissue landmarks and soft tissue landmarks. Why is that? Because sometimes you're missing teeth, so you don't want to depend on uh, just soft tissue, and sometimes there is just variation in the anatomy. So by using, by depending on both soft tissue and hard tissue, you'll most probably be able to deliver successful anesthesia. Your hard tissue landmark are basically three structures. The external oblique ridge, the deepest depression here, that's called the crinoid notch, and the anterior border of the ascending ramus. Your soft tissue landmark is the pterygomandibular raphe here. This is the pterygomandibular fold or raphe. The fold basically is just the superior part that just covers the raphe. So what's your aim? Your aim to deliver successful anesthesia is to be around the mandibular foramen here to catch the nerve. And above this foramen, there's a structure here that's called a lingula. Now that you know your aim and your anatomical landmarks, the hard tissue structure and the soft tissue landmarks, the technique includes two things. First, the height, like where exactly you want to give the anesthesia. Is it at that, at that height? Is it this deep? Or is it that high? Where exactly? And also the anteroposterior position. Do you want to give it here, there, or in that direction? So how to determine the height and the anteroposterior position of your needle to deliver successful anesthesia? By basically using the anatomical landmark. First, to determine the height. The correct height is six to ten millimeters above the occlusal plane. Or Another technique to determine the height is basically by following the anatomical structure, which is the crinoid notch. It's here, that depression. Plus an imaginary line, a horizontal line, from the crinoid notch to the pterygomandibular raphe. So since we determined that my anteroposterior direction will be from the crinoid to the pterygomandibular raphe, it's basically in this area, but where exactly? So to know where exactly to go in an anteroposterior location, we will divide this space into three thirds. This is my first third, this is my second, and this is my last third. The anteroposterior location should be two thirds this space, so it's here. Now I should come from the opposite direction on the second premolar, I know my height. We already determined the height, which is from the crinoid notch to the deepest portion, deepest part of the pterygomandibular raphe. It's here. And I need to be two thirds of this location or of this space. So I'll be exactly here. Where exactly I am, my needle is exactly in the right location. I'm around the mandibular foramen. So this green line that you see here represents the imaginary line, the horizontal line that's from the crinoid notch to the deepest portion of the pterygomandibular raphe. If I'm here, it means the location, the height is here. So I go back here, my height is here. But where exactly my anteroposterior location? We'll draw another line. The other green line here represents the anteroposterior location which is again two thirds of this space from the crinoid notch to the pterygomandibular raphe. So we have already determined the height, which is here, the deepest portion of the pterygomandibular raphe, and the anteroposterior location is here, because this is two thirds. So basically, it's the point in there. What if you touch bone very early, like this? You're touching bone very early. This means you're too posterior and you need to adjust your location to go more anterior. So all you need is to withdraw your needle a bit to change the location. From here 
to there. You don't need to withdraw it like entirely. You could just redirect it inside the tissue. And what if there is no contact? Like you don't contact the bone at all. This means you're too posterior. If you're too posterior, you could just anesthetize the deeper parotid salivary gland that has the um, facial nerve. So you basically need to redirect your needle. If you're too posterior, you redirect your needle to go more anteriorly, like here. The structures you're penetrating while administering this type of anesthesia is the mucous membrane, of course, and the vaccinator muscle that's here.